Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look on how you can get started building Web3 applications with Third Web. And in this video, we'll go over a few things. We'll first go over how you can start building your very own Web3 project using Third Web's CLI. We'll use the CLI to create a Next.js project, and this is going to have everything set up for you ready to go so you can start building immediately. Then we'll also take a look at how you can implement Third Web into an existing Next.js project as well. We'll also be covering things like third web's api keys and how to create one and how to utilize them within your app so with all of that being said let's jump on the computer here and let's get started so in my terminal here, what we're going to do is create a starting template for us to get started. Now we're going to be creating a Next.js project here and using Third Web's CLI, we can easily create this and get started. All we're going to do is run MPX Third Web Create App. We'll have to give ourselves or our project a name here. We're going to say Third Web. Uh, getting started and then you can select the framework you want to use now currently we support templates uh, or starter templates for Next.js, Vite, and React Native. So you can select the framework you want to use in this tutorial. We're going to be using Next.js here. So I'm going to select Next.js and this is going to again set up a Next.js project for us. It's going to have Third Web's Connect SDK already installed and it's going to have the necessary setup for us, like creating our Third Web client along with wrapping our application with the Third Web provider. You don't need to worry too much about that right now. We're going to go over it, uh, but we'll also show you how to implement the Third Web's Connect SDK to an existing Next.js project and how you can set this up manually. But with Third Web CLI here, all you need to do is run MPX Third Web Create App, select the Next.js framework and everything will be built and set up for you. So we're just going to change into our third web getting started project here. I'm going to open this up in my code editor. You can see in my code editor here, we have our project set up for us. We have a .env file here where we're going to have to supply and provide our third web API key or our client ID in our sources folder here in the app folder. We have our client.ts file. This is going to set up and create our third web client right here using our client ID that we provide to our .env file. And if we take a look at the page.tsx here, this is some templated code here that we'll take a look at in just a moment. And if we look at our layout.tsx file here, you'll see that we have our application here wrapped with the third web provider which is what is going to allow us to utilize the Third Web Connect SDK. So with this set up, let's before we run this locally here on my computer, let's get our Third Web API key or our client ID and provide it right over here. So I'm going to head back to the Third Web dashboard. So this is thirdweb.com. We're going to head to the dashboard here. We need to connect our wallet. So I'm just going to connect a wallet here. We're going to sign in. And once we're connected, we're going to head over to the settings tab and the settings tab here. The first thing that will open up is your API keys. Now, this is your third web API keys, and you're going to be provided a client ID for client side use and then a secret key, which is going to be for server side use. Now, to go over that, we're going to create a new API key here in the top right. And with this, you can name your key here. So I'm just going to call this our third web. Um, we'll just call this our YouTube course API key. And then down here, you can select your allowed domains. Now, if you allow all domains, what you're doing is you are allowing all domains, the use of this API key, wherever it is used. Now for this tutorial sake, I am just going to allow all domains. You can even just authorize a certain local host and the port that you have it running on. So you can, if you're just testing this out locally and you don't want anyone else to get a hold of your API key and start using it themselves, you can just put in like your local host 3000, 3001, wherever you have your application running locally, you can put that in. But just for the ease of use here, I'm going to allow all domains here. Uh, this is just going to allow this access to everything in production use. You're going to want to put in your own domain name here uh, that you're allowing use of for this API key. So again, I'm just going to allow all domains. I'm going to hit next. Uh, it's going to say here that I have unrestricted web access and we're requesting that all origins can be authorized. So this is just because I allowed all domains. So I'm just going to hit proceed here. And there you go. You can see our API key was created. We have our client ID here, which is what we're going to be using in our application. But we're also created a secret key here. Now, this secret key is going to be used for your backend or for your server side usage. 
This is for things like if you want to um, use our storage and you want to upload or download things from IPFS, or if you want to utilize the other features and tools like RPC Edge. So you're going to have to save this secret key here on the side. You are only given this secret key once. So you can see here, secret key handling, do not share or expose your secret key. The secret key cannot be recovered. If you do lose your secret key, you will need to create a new API key pair. So if you lose a secret key, you have to create a brand new API key with a brand new client ID. There is no way to retrieve or restore or change the secret key associated to the client ID here. That means you'll have to save this and secure it safely on the side. So copy that, store it somewhere safely. Client ID, you'll be able to retrieve afterwards, no matter what. So you can just hit confirm. I have secured and stored my secret key. And just a heads up, don't try to copy the secret key here because after this video is made, the secret key and API key will be deleted. So just giving a heads up there. You also don't want to share your secret key again with others as well. So we hit complete here. We have our API key here. So I'm going to copy my client ID. We're going to come back to our code editor here. And in that .env file, we're going to paste this in here and save that. Now you can see here this .env file is a .env.example. We're going to have to rename that for this to work here. And just because I'm just testing this locally here, I'm just going to put .env.local. I'm just going to run yarn dev here to run this locally. This will open up on my local host 3000. And there you go. We have our templated Next.js project here. We have the third web SDK with Next.js here. We have a demo connect wallet button, which if we click, you can see all of the different wallets and methods we can use to log in and connect a wallet to our application. And we have links to our docs, components and hooks and the third web dashboard. So this is what you get out of the box using and building a project with the third webs CLI. And that there gets you a starting point in which you can start building your very own Web3 applications using Next.js and third webs SDK. So by just running NPX third web create app, providing it with a third web API key, you can again just get a project up and running in a matter of minutes. Now let's dive a little bit deeper and take a look at the third web API key. So if we click on our API key that we just created here, you can see we have our client ID. This is our client ID that we provided again to set up the third web SDK with our Next.js project. We have our secret key here, which we were provided. You have some information about when it was created, last used and last accessed. You have your access restrictions here. So allow domains. Again, you're going to want to restrict this to use for only the domains that you are using uh, along with bundle IDs. And this is going to be for things like Web3 games using things like our Unity SDK or mobile applications using our React Native SDK. Down here at the bottom are other services that you can configure with your API key. So I'm going to come up here to the top right and hit edit. And you can see here, this is where I can edit the name. I can change the allow domains along with the bundle IDs. Again, this is for iOS, Android and um, Unity games. And then down here we have our services and we can actually toggle on and off and customize the usage of what services are allowed for this API key. So maybe I have an API key and I'm only going to be using it for storage. I can turn off all these other services and only allow storage usage. So you can configure what use cases and what you're actually going to be using the API key for. That way you can control what is actually being used with the API key. So to kind of go over this, uh, we have storage here. We have IPFS upload and download. You also also can toggle if you want to just allow upload or download, or you can allow both. Uh, you have our RPC usage here through third web. So again, RPC edge, you have account abstraction. This is going to be for things through third web where you can use our bundler and paymaster services. You have in-app wallets. This is going to allow you to utilize our in-app wallet, which allows wallet generations utilizing things like social login, email, phone number or pass key. You have checkouts here. This is for credit card checkouts for NFTs. And then you have pay and pay is going to be for things like fiat on ramping or crypto to crypto swapping. So again, you can go through all of these. You can configure them depending on the service. Let's just say account abstraction here. Um, there are some other 
settings and everything that you can configure. So if you look here, account abstraction, you can choose the API key here that you're configuring the account abstraction for. You can configure things like sponsorship rules. This includes things like global spend limits. You can restrict it to certain chains. You can restrict it to only allow interactions with certain smart contracts. So a lot of the configurations and features that you get with account abstraction, you can edit that all here within your settings. If we go back, you have things like in-app wallets. So you can see here, if you have ThirdWeb's growth plan, you can do things like branding. So you can custom the email and logo and name that gets sent to users when they receive a one-time password from logging in with an email in in-app wallets. You can also do custom authentication. So you can bring your own custom JSON web tokens or JWT, and you can create your own authentication method for using in-app wallets. And this allows you to, again, if you can, you can bring your own custom authentication or you can create your own custom authentications for things if you want users to sign in with maybe uh, Discord or GitHub or something like that, you can bring your own here. And then finally here, we have more configurations for pay here. And really what pay allows you to do here is you get to set up your recipient address for fee sharing. Again, pay, we'll dive into this in another video. You can check out the link in the description below if you want to learn a little bit more about pay when we take a deeper dive into it. But what pay essentially allows a user to do is we allow things like crypto to crypto swapping. So if someone has Matic, but maybe they need ETH on base, we allow them to get ETH on base by swapping Matic that they have all within the connect wallet component or an embedded component that you can use through third webs connect SDK. And through that third web takes a 1% fee of those transactions, but 30% of that we share with developers. And this is a great way for developers to earn revenue by implementing these features into their applications. Not only does it make it easier and simpler for your users, but it also allows you to generate revenue at the same time. So this is where you can uh, put in the recipient wallet, where those fees are going to go to uh, when users do use that uh, pay feature within your application. So again, that is a overview of API keys and everything through third web. Again, you can come to your dashboard, go to settings, go to API keys, create an API key. And through there, you can also customize the services and everything that you want to allow. And with that, all you again, you need to do is run NPX third web, create app, select your framework, provide it with a client ID and you're ready to go. Now that is if you are starting a new project, but let's take a look if you already have maybe a Next.js project being built and maybe you want to implement and install ThirdWeb's Connect SDK. So let's come back to our terminal here. Let me just get out of this and clear this out and let's run NPX, create next app. And then let's just say a ThirdWeb next app. So we're going to create a brand new Next.js project here. So we're just going to say yes to TypeScript. Um, no to ESLint, no to Tailwind, no to source directory, and yes to app router, and no to customizing the default import alias. Uh, I'm just gonna set up a really quick Next.js project here. And once this is set up, we'll open this up in our code editor. So yeah, we'll say third web uh, next app, and then we'll open this up in our code editor. So let's just say again, you have a, a Next.js project already started and you just wanna implement third web's connect SDK. All we'll do here is we'll open up our terminal within our code editor and we just need to install third webs connect SDK here. Now we support NPM, Yarn, PMPN and Bun. So you can install third webs connect SDK however you feel fit. I'm just going to say Yarn add and third web. If you're using NPM, you want NPM install third web and so forth. So I'm going to run Yarn add third web. This is going to add third webs connect SDK here. There we go. So we've installed that. We can take a look at ThirdWeb's documentation here and we can take a look at ThirdWeb's documentation here. Again, links to this will be down in the description below. We've already installed ThirdWeb here. Again, we support NPM, Yarn, PMPN or Bun. And the first thing we need to do here is create a client. So what we need to do is create a client using create ThirdWeb client. So coming back to our code editor here in my source folder and in the app folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this our client.ts file. And in that client.ts file, I'm first going to get my client ID. So let's say client ID. And we're going to store this 
client ID in a .env file here, and it's going to be an environment variable. So we'll just say uh, this is going to be a next public client ID. And we'll also just have a rule here. If there is no client ID, then we're going to just throw an error saying that there was no client ID found. And then what we're going to do here is export a variable here called our client. And we're going to use the create third web client here, and we're going to import that from third web. So let's import create third web client from third web. And for create the third web client, we just need to provide it the client ID. So we're going to say client ID here, which is going to be our client ID above right over here. So now all we need to do again, just like how we did in our previous project, we just need to create a dot env file and create an environment variable here for our client ID. So coming here, I'm going to create a new file. We're going to say dot env dot dot local. Then we're going to create our next public client ID here. And this is going to equal our client ID. So let's grab that really quick. So grab it, paste it back in here. And there you go. We now have our client set up and we have our client ID provided in our environment variable. So once we have that set up, the next thing we need to do, if we take a look at our docs here, we're going to go under the react section and we're going to go to our third web provider. And you can see this is our third web provider here, which is a lightweight component that sets up a react query context for the third web SDK and hooks. So we need to just wrap our application here with the third web provider. So we're going to come back to our project. We're going to come to the layout.tsx page. And this children right here of our application is what we're going to wrap with our third web provider. So over here, we're going to come and just put in our third web provider. And then we'll make sure that it is wrapping our children here. And then we'll come up to the top and we'll make sure we import our third web provider from third web slash react. We'll save that. We now have our Next.js project set up with the third web SDK. So just a quick overview of what we did. We had to create a third web client utilizing our third web API key. We have a .env file here for our environment variable for that API key. And then in our layout.tsx here, we have wrapped our application with the third web provider. So coming here, if I run this and I run this locally, we'll just run yarn dev, we'll open this up. You can see here we get our Next.js template loaded here. So everything is running fine and we can quickly just add a let's just close this. Let's head back to the page.tsx file and right over here. What we're going to do is just add a really quick connect button. This is a UI component from third webs connect SDK. Uh, we'll provide it with our client from our client.ts file. I'm just going to add that really quick to our application. Uh, but if you do want to learn more about the connect button, we'll drop some links to videos down below. And there you go. You can see here I have a connect button. Uh, if I disconnect, the connect button is a UI component that gives you everything you need to connect wallets to your Web3 application right out of the box. And you can see here we can connect something like a MetaMask wallet. We have all our information and everything right over here. And again, we just need to set up our next JS project with third of connect SDK and simply add a connect button UI component. And there you have it. That was a quick tutorial on getting started with ThirdWeb's Connect SDK. You can use, again, ThirdWeb CLI to just quickly create a new project. We support frameworks like Next.js, Vite, and React Native currently. Or if you already have a project going, you can, again, just install ThirdWeb's Connect SDK, allowing you to quickly build Web3 applications. So I hope you folks enjoyed this video and you found some value in it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on more tutorial videos just like this. If you need any help or support, we'll drop links down in the description below where you can open up a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out and answer any of your questions. Also check down in the description below for links on other videos on how to use Third Web to build Web3 applications. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. Until next time, see ya.